Hello coders, I'm Adam and this is Gosu Coders. So Elm version 0 0.19 was recently released. We're gonna take a look at that. Let's get started. So Elm has been in development since 2012 according to the release notes. And from what I can tell, it's sort of a Angular or React alternative. Now I have never used Elm, so I'm gonna dive into the release notes and then we're gonna jump into some actual code. So I'm looking at the release notes on GitHub and I'm gonna scroll down to some of the major things. You know, they've moved around some files, they've renamed some functions and some modules, they've, they've done a lot of the regular maintenance stuff that you would expect. I think the big thing about this release is the dash dash optimize flag. And I'm gonna read you the release notes. So you can now compile with elm make dash dash optimize, which enables things like reliable field name shortening in compiled assets. Unbox things like type height equals height float to just be a float at runtime. Unbox character values. Use more compact name for type constructors and compiled assets. Some of these optimizations require forgetting information that is useful while debugging. So the debug module becomes unavailable when you add the dash dash optimize flag. The idea being that you want to be shipping code with this flag, but not compiling it with all day development. The next thing we're going to talk about is compiler performance. I did a bunch of performance optimizations for the compiler itself. For example, I wrote the parser to be very significantly faster, partly by allocating very little. I revamped how type inference looks up the type of foreign variables to be big O of one constant time rather than big O of log n, so logarithmic time. So a huge gain there. I redid how code is generated to allow DCE with declarations at the level of granularity. Packages are downloaded once per user and saved in the slash dot home folder. Packages are built once for any given set of dependencies, so they do not contribute to build times of fresh projects. Point is, the compiler is very significantly faster. A few more things I want to point out here as we go down. Stricter record update syntax. So another one that I want to talk about is the removing of user-defined operations. I did see a post on Medium about a company that posted that they really hate that this was added to 0.19 and that they were going to stay on 0.18. So let's take a look at the blog post where they start talking about like how much smaller does a dash dash optimized flag actually make things. So as you're looking at the scrolling page that I have on the screen right now, you can see in this chart they show it is significantly smaller. And I'm just going to read what they have here in the blog. Elm 0.19 makes our assets really small without the headache. A bunch of projects have implemented this real-world app that is a decent size application. We compared some of the most popular implementations to see how Elm stacks up. So you can see that Vue 2.5 took 100 kilobytes. Angular 6 took 93 kilobytes. React 16.4 took 77 kilobytes. And Elm 0.19 took 29 kilobytes. That is amazing. So the Elm version is quite small, and of course smaller is better. It also means it's faster downloads. Note that the React library itself is 32 kilobytes, just the library without any application code. So the entire real-world app is 29 kilobyte, so no amount of code splitting can make the React version smaller than the Elm version. So they go on to talk a little bit about some larger projects and how there are examples of 49,000 line projects compiling for just a little over 100 kilobytes as well. So from the size side of things, it seems pretty promising. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm also really interested in the dead code elimination that they talk a little bit about. But beyond all the cool changes in the release, I think it's time for us to jump into trying it out since we've never looked at this before. So before we kick this off, I do need to preface this with I've been an Angular user since Angular 0.3 or something like that. I've been using Angular for a very long time. And just what I see of Elm today, it's going to make me need to 
rethink the way that I design and build web apps. So I think there's going to be a, quite a bit of a learning curve for me to overcome that. But anyway, let's jump into setup. Navigate over to the install page in their documentation, their official guide. I've set this up on both a Mac and Windows computer. Both of them worked phenomenally. You download the binary by clicking on the link that you'll see here on the screen. I'll also post a link below directly to this page. To verify that the installation has worked, open up a terminal or command prompt and type in ELM, E-L-M. You will see a response back if it was successful. That's very important before moving to the next step. If it isn't working on Windows, you might want to check your environment variables to make sure that it is put in the right location. It should be in your path environment variable. So after getting that all set up, I went to Visual Studio Code and installed the, the plugin, the extension for Elm. And as you can see, it's pretty highly rated. It's been downloaded a ton of times, so I feel pretty, pretty confident that this is going to work pretty well. And one thing that I didn't see right away in the documentation that caught me a little bit off guard is running the Elm init. Make sure you do that on the empty folder that you make. So I made a new folder called Elm test and you navigate there in your command prompt or your terminal, call Elm init, make sure you hit yes when it asks you if you wanna create your Elm.json file and then you're good to go. When that call ends, you should actually have a JSON file and a source folder. And once you have those two things, you're ready to start moving on to the next phase. So literally, this, this has taken me maybe a couple minutes now, and I've had no problems. Everything has worked flawlessly. I start by creating a file called main.elm, and I literally copy the counter example that they've got in their documentation. I put that into that file, and then I start reading through some of the documentation, and I find that I can either call elm make and convert that to H HTML, or I can call elm reactor. I decided to try the Elm Reactor route. So as you can see on screen, when you run Elm Reactor, it'll actually give you back a URL. Mine was on port 8000. I'm pretty sure that's standard, that's the default, and I haven't really looked into how to change that. So you're gonna navigate to localhost 8000, and you're gonna see a page that looks like this. Some really cool things when you first look at this page. Over here on the left side, you can see the entire source hierarchy of your code. On the right side, you can see any dependencies that the application depends on. And if you click on those, which I did, it will open up a external link to more information about that dependency. So anyway, let's navigate in and try to find our main.elm file. So now that we've navigated into the source folder and we've clicked our main.elm file, you can see we've got a really rough looking counter here. This counter is in the top left corner of my screen and it's got a minus button on top and a plus button on the bottom. But as you can see, it works. I've literally just copy and pasted and out the gate in a matter of five minutes, I'm up and running with the example. I do have to keep reiterating this, but that is super rare. Um, a lot of times when I'm trying out new libraries, things go wrong and they go wrong a lot. So I was really happy to get this far on both a Mac and a Windows PC without any issues. So that is awesome. I started playing around with modifying some of the code in the example, but really I have no idea how to hook things together at this point. I mean, I've got a counter, which I would think of it in terms of a component if I'm looking at it from an Angular perspective, but I really don't know what to do with that, right? Like how do I make an application that's made up of multiple of these things? So I keep going through the documentation and I keep reading, do a little bit of Googling, but ultimately I wanna stay very specifically in the Elm documentation to see if I can get through and answer all the questions that I have from their documentation. I eventually get down to a part called web apps and in web apps there is a module section. So it looks like you can create an Elm file and expose a module. And then that module can be used in other modules. So in my, in the way that I'm thinking about it is I kind of think it works like components, but honestly, when reading through the documentation, it's very, very heavily focused on making it page-based versus component-based. So again, I need to shift my thinking 
around how to build an app in Elm. I ended up trying a few things to see if I could get a very simple, I just wanted a counter module to be put in another file. And I finally got that to work, but it was pretty painful to be honest with you. And I think it's because I'm so ingrained with how I've done Angular development in the past that it just didn't work that way. The other thing to add on to is all your HTML and your styling and everything is declarative. So it exists in the same file as your code, which I actually really liked and I felt like it felt pretty natural to actually write divs and, and buttons and input fields and being able to have functions that, that maybe return HTML. I really enjoyed that part of it. But it might take some getting used to, especially for those of us coming from Angular. Uh, React has something similar with JSX, but again, if you're coming from Angular and you're used to having an HTML file, it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve. In the end, I ended up finding a great example that I Googled, and it was on somebody's GitHub repository where they had compiled a couple modules together, and one of them was called like Widget, one of them was called like uh, the counter, and that pretty much showed me what needed to happen there. There's still a lot of gaps in my knowledge on understanding how to build an app properly with Elm. And honestly, I figured it's time to stop here because the best way to really, really learn a framework is to come up with an idea and build something. In summary though, I'm actually really impressed with Elm. Elm been around since 2012. The documentation is really good. It seems like a very small team that is working on it based on the way some of the documentation was worded especially with words like I in it, which means it was probably a solo effort for the most part. They don't really have a concrete roadmap for what new features are coming, which I was a little bit disappointed in. So I don't know really where Elm's going long term. But in the end, I would highly recommend you checking it out. Not only because I feel like getting it up and running is really super easy to do, but all of us, every one of us needs to make sure that we know about all the options out there as programmers so that we can choose the right tool for the job. That is our job as programmers to do. And I would love to hear from you if you've had a chance to work with them. I would love to find out more uh, about your opinions of it. And if you've got a project you've built with it, I would love to see it. I would love to see some production applications that have been built with them. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. I had a blast really digging into Elm for the first time. And please check back tomorrow. I will have new videos on technologies, libraries, and interview tips. I'm trying to post a lot more regular. And if you haven't subscribed yet, it would mean the world to me for you to subscribe. Anyway, keep coding. Till next time.